I'm still sitting outside, but this time I'm in my uh, my parents' back garden. I don't have a garden, which is pretty annoying. I've got a sort of little courtyard at the front um, and a courtyard at the back, which I can't get to um, because of my position within the building. Um, so uh, I come round here instead. Um, it's quite a lot to report this week. In fact, it's been the uh, first week of November which means um, we started with uh, what in the Christian calendar is called All Saints Day. Now it's quite an important um, occasion for me because when I was in London I worked uh, at St Paul's Cathedral and uh, the 1st of November happens to be an anniversary. It was the anniversary of the day that I got confirmed um, as a member of the Anglican Church uh, in St Paul's Cathedral, so quite an important uh, uh, date for me to remember that. Um, the 3rd of November is another, um, or was another, uh, festival within the liturgical calendar called All Souls Day. Um, it's the uh, date that the churches really do all their requiem masses. Um, it's a day where you basically remember all all the Christian dead um, uh, and again you see I quite like that um, that idea so uh, of honoring the dead like that so it's it's uh, it's a time I like the start of November I do like the start of November with those two festivals then on the 5th of November we have uh, in England what's known as bonfire night now bonfire night is one of these strange things when uh, we celebrate, but actually we, we shouldn't really celebrate it, because um, it, it, what it is, is uh, in, I think it was 1605, could be wrong, could be 1505, I can't quite remember, but anyway, there was a plot to overthrow the, uh, the British government, uh, which involved uh, somebody who was called Guy Fawkes, um, a Roman Catholic, trying to overthrow what I think was probably a Protestant uh, government at the time and he did this by breaking into the Palace of Westminster which is happens to be where the seat of government still is um, and he went underneath it and the idea was that he set off explosives killed the king killed the parliament and, and basically overturned the government now actually none of that happened because he was caught with the gunpowder underneath the uh, the House of Commons planting it um, but we sort of celebrate that anyway I don't know if we're celebrating the fact that he he uh, thought up the idea or, or the fact that he was rumbled before he managed to go through with it or, or what I don't know but we do it by throwing up lighted fireworks and watching them explode and, and we also light a bonfire with a with a sort of effigy of him on top um, <laughs> so there was that um, and we basically had our um, fireworks display uh, we, we went to the one that was done by the council I think on the uh, the stray uh, 15,000 people turned up um, and I got it all on on uh, on tape and uploaded it and I've had 155 people have a look at that since which is quite good considering last week's blog got about seven people looking so there we are anyway Unfortunately, the 5th was also not really a day to celebrate for me. Well, it, it, it generally all depends on how you look at it. You see, I, I wrote an article for MMA Hit Pit, which was uploaded this week as well, and it was called uh, The Mixed Loyalties of Emotional Investment. I'm of the strong opinion that you... to get the most out of um, a combat sport, be it boxing or mixed martial arts or whatever, you actually have to empathise with, connect with, and identify with uh, one or more of the people who are fighting. Um, to do that, you have to really know the person or, or their character um, uh, in order to sort of do that. Now, the main mainstay for this and where I came from was actually sort of professional wrestling in which um, a, a choreographed sort of morality play, if you like, is put out and the idea is that you identify with one or the other. Um, and you uh, you can sort of um, you can have all the enjoyment of reversing a, a power discourse um, by sort of watching 
sort of two people and, and it's a drama it's a, it's a choreographed sort of uh, dance if you like it is not a sport the thing with mixed martial arts is of course that it is a sport it's actually competitive and the there's no actual um, controlling of of which participant does what what they say in the run-up to the uh, event how the event turns out and what they say afterwards um, and of course people who know me very well will know that my favorite fighter Jens Pulver dropped another one um, this this past week at WEC. It was actually supposed to happen about two months ago but uh, the bout was uh, postponed due to uh, bad weather. Um, so I'm a little bit upset about that and I wrote this article because another of the problems that I had was was that I actually like uh, Leonard Garcia who was the person who beat him um, and is now uh, probably in line for a a title shot very shortly. I, should, I hasten to add that uh, Uriah Farber is no longer uh, king of the division um, but there we are, that's another story entirely. Um, so well, I wrote this article really and it was sort of uh, it was a um, I didn't deliberately write it for the site. I offered it to them after I wrote it. I wrote it as a sort of uh, sort of working something out in my own mind about the sort of difficulties of being a fan in this age where you identify with with uh, both sides of the competition and you are sort of emotionally invested in their welfare really and it's a, a lose-lose situation because it doesn't matter who wins you know one of the people you would have liked to have won has lost and there are you know career and financial and you know emotional and psychological sort of repercussions uh, for, for that so it's difficult it was quite difficult so that was uh, happened on the 5th middle of last week same night as bonfire night um, so I wasn't really celebrating that and uh, just trying to think what else ah uh, yes and then uh, after that I got to my new issue of uh, fighters only magazine you will remember that uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, a couple of months ago rather I managed to win uh, letter of the month award and a, and a t-shirt um, for uh, for criticizing shall we say hi will teague who i have to say i i really like he is the editor of fighters only now um, and uh, he's a, an mma journalist and and he really is one of the best in the world well as far as i'm concerned um, really is uh, but i do like to dissect his um, his uh, articles and send back feedback and uh, now I'm sort of getting published for it basically um, so I was published again this last month uh, not as uh, uh, um, letter of the month but uh, I think there's only about it's only a page there's only about six letters that are printed one of which is the letter of the month and, and the others are sort of worth publishing I guess um, as far as the management is concerned so I'm, I'm quite pleased that you know in the last sort of four months I've been published twice by them one uh, as letter of the month so that's fantastic um, this week at work is uh, my last week before I go on holiday my manager is is already on holiday another holiday this week so I don't get to see him now until the end of December um, I'm looking forward to my two weeks holiday uh, which begins sort of on the 16th of this month um, last week do you know there wasn't much that happened to be totally honest and there wasn't much that happened with my family either so there we are I, th I think that's about it except to say that now I am looking to do two things I'm looking to uh, start making plans for 2009 States Tour I'm visiting Washington DC, Virginia, Illinois, um, Iowa, California and probably Missouri as well. So if you are in any of those states or if you wish to travel to those states to see me, uh, be you a uh, fighter, fan or uh, patron of Matt Hughes Forum, uh, just let me know and I shall try and slot you in.